won't believe this, but I just paid nearly five euro for asparagus. This is Norway. I'm Josh, Josh Spear, and I live here in Oslo. I'm a composer and co-host of Composer Gunnell. Thanks for tuning in. I recently split up with my husband, so money is a little bit tight. and Things are so strange right now. Life is hard now. And it's expensive here. What was I saying? So yeah, here we are in Oslo. Jag heter Josh. Jag är komponist med Everyone Company. Oh, you know, in Norwegian, the word married, jag är gift, is the same as the word poisoned. Jag är Forgifted. Funny, right? You know, now would be a great time to hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you never miss us in the future. I'll wait until you do it. <laughs> wait. This is us. <laughs> I'm joking. I don't have a car. If I did, it wouldn't be this big, expensive one. Everyone has so much bloody money here. This is my place. And I share it with my cat. She's called Girl. Come on in. Come on. Hey. Hi. And how was it? It's the same. Every day is the same. Weather's good though. So. So. I sit here mostly. I can look out the window. My table used to be here. The dining table. But now it's in there. I had to move my whole studio home from the Academy of Music. Didn't I? So. So. Sometimes I work in there or I sit in there. But mostly it's a lot of waiting waiting for summer. Okay. <laughs> what are we doing? I've got to call John. John. Hey. Hi. How are you? That's good. You okay? Yeah. 
I'm down, Josh. Oh, are, are you are you excited at least? Yeah, we've no. Got, uh, uh, we've got Dicky uh, Dicky Bo as our guest. Yes, I'm really excited. About Thank God for you. Um, well, look, I'm I'm part way through my my bit now, so I'm going to get back to it. Okay. Um, and I'll see you later. Okay. No, I and I'll do something. I don't know. He eventually gets out of it. So. I have this idea for a new piece. It's, um, well, it's these two chords <laughs> that I didn't even write. You want to hear? And then uh, there's the violin, too. Well, that's it, actually. <laughs> That's all I've got. I'm kind of a bit distracted. Working from home is not ideal. Didn't I? Yes. So... It's so noisy so, around here today. So, shall I go for a walk? Okay. Sure. I'll go. Let's go. Bye. Lock the door. Sometimes it's best to get out and go for a walk when the ideas slow down. I love this street. Sometimes I pretend I'm in a Hitchcock movie. I've lived here for two years and never been down those steps. Whoa! Look at that weird little troll cabin. I've got to do an Instagram story with it. Troll cabin filter. Getting no looking for ideas. Uh -huh. oh, wow. I have the idea.
Hi. Hey. And how was it? It's the same. Every day is the same. Weather's good though. So... Uh, my life is over. I am down. I think I'm dying. You know what I hate? Gravity. You know, you, 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 you start out like a projectile, and you're going up, 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 and then fucking gravity of the, of the situation starts to pull you down psychologically. It's like, did you ever... Uh, did you ever notice this drawing that's here? This is my little robot character from this piece I made called Everyone. And, and he or she demonstrated for us this rainbow of positions that human beings make. Like, like, look, look, look. This is Everyone. Everyone starts out on their back, and everything that affects them is above. So they gotta get there. And up, 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 and finally at noon, you're at peak responsibility. But then, ah, gravity. And then it's, whoa, what's happening? And then, bam, you hit the ground. Yeah. Cozy. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. I'm just me and I'm I was Marie. just thinking about you. Well, I think of you often too. Cozy and Marie were the musicians in everyone. Yeah, and I played the violin and Marie the dice and we did some crazy robot stuff. I'm so down. Well, you should stay positive mm. or actually negative at the moment. Do you have your violin? Oh, yeah. Would For you sure. please, please play me the intro oh. to everyone? Do you remember it? Thank you. It soothes me. In this hour of my death, I who have traversed that rainbow I need some air. Let's go outside. Shit. It's Eula and Christine. You know, another thing about everyone is that everyone that was in it, they hate me. And now I gotta see him around. Hey. Hey, oh, hey, John. How are you? Fine, and you? Um, yeah. What are you doing? Are we coming from Heike's studio? Oh. Are you working on some new stuff? I'm doing, um, stuff. Thinking a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta, yeah. Okay. Okay, tschüss, John. I'll see ya. Tschüss. Did you think Christine was looking weird at me? Hast du gesehen, wie er mich angeguckt hat? Ich vermisse es, mit John zu arbeiten. Oh, ich vermisse everyone. Ich habe das gern getanzt. Weißt du noch? Die Position, ganz am Anfang, in der mussten wir immer so ewig warten, bis das Publikum drin war. Das war ganz schön anstrengend. Ah ja, genau. Und dann wie... Ah ja, dann hatte ich das Solo. <lacht>
John is not online.
Hey, Josh. Oh, Marie. Hello. I thought I was calling John. Where Where is uh, John? I don't know. He says he just repeats that he's down and talks about rainbows. I I have no idea. Oh, boy. Do, do you know if he's uh, done anything for this episode yet at all? I, I think he has, hasn't done anything <laughs> yet. I don't know if he has a plan. I don't know. Oh, boy. Um, well, I've got to go. I've got to interview Dickie Bo. Uh, I'm very, very excited about it. All right, um, Dickie so wish Bo. Me, yeah, so wish oh. me luck. I'm nervous, but it's going to be great. Yes, it's going to be cool. Viel Glück. Thanks, Sherm. Bis gleich. Bis dann. Well, hello, Dickie. Welcome to Compose Genau. Thank you for being um, our guest on this our second episode. Well, thank you for having me, Josh. Pleasure. Pleasure's all ours, all mine. Is it true, um, are you in London at the moment? I am. I'm in Bethnal Green. Ah, I've, I've got this idea that you live in a sort of bohemian warehouse situation. That's absolutely right. I um, I sort of want to um, explain to everybody who you are. Um, oh. Well, I, w I wonder if I should try and do it, and then yeah. you can uh, fill in the gaps, if you like. I like that. Um, so, Dickie Bo, you are a theatre maker, a uh, drag fabulist, a... Um, you're no stranger to the stage, uh, you make work for video in the video media, did I mention the stage? And um, you've also been in a few films. And each time I talk to your, your career is sort of going that's up, it's going up, it's going up like that. Um, always sounds very exciting. Did I miss anything out? Do you want to tell us more? No, I think that sounds like a good summary. <laughs> good. Well, I was I was going to say yeah um, that for me, lip sync is a sort of a way. That I found. Yeah. Well, no, I didn't find it, but maybe, maybe I think I, I saw you doing it first, and um, and then uh, thick and tight, the duo of thick and tight doing it. And I thought that was a brilliant way for me to meld sound and movement together, two things which are very important to me. But um, when you speak about ghosts, I know you have this, you have a, an even more richer, whimsical sort of um, approach to lip sync or, or understanding of what it is or, or what's going on there. Would you like to talk about it from your end? Sure. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's a kind of relationship to spiritualism that um, that is part of my relationship to lip syncing. Not that I buy spiritualism, but when I just mentioned that I did a Kenneth Williams lip sync, when I did this Kenneth Williams lip, lip sync, um, a cabaret reviewer uh, gave me this great quote. And they said, um, oh, Dickie Bo is the closest this country has to a genuine medium. And um, uh, because of the way that I put flesh onto recorded sound. And... Um, and I thought, oh, it's, and I'm sure I'd thought mm. about that. You know, I'm sure I'd thought about that, but it really sort of landed. And I thought, oh, yes, no, it really is quite like being a medium, isn't it? And um, as in the leader of a seance. And um, I was talking about this with an artist friend who said, you know, you should read this book called An Anthropology of Images by Hans Belting. Mm. And um, so I did. And in this book, Hans Belting talks about the history of human image making as it pertains to the funereal realm, you know, death. And so he goes back to like the, the early Neolithic uh, settlements where um, uh, the, the, ex the, those, the examples of human image making there, the, those earliest examples would be like stone death masks, you know. Well, the gravestone is, an, is merely an evolution of that original idea. Um, you know, the headstone, you know, the stone made of head became the headstone. And what would happen in that time was, you know, if your father dies, let's say, you know, I'm thinking of Hamlet and his father dying. Um, if, if your father died, um, then you would bury your father in, under the floor of your mud hut, you know, um, and possibly quite quickly, depending on the climate, um, you know, 
Yeah. And and what's happened when your father's died is that 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 you know his body has become an image of him. You know what I mean? And I remember this when my grandmother died. Um, like I recognised this body as belonging to her, but I couldn't see her. Yes. In the body anymore. Yes. Because she wasn't there. So, so what it does to extend that is um, the body makes present the idea of the person at the same time as it makes present the fact that they're gone. See what I mean? So it becomes the presence of an absence. And Hans Belting says that that's what all images do. They, they, they are and they mean the presence of an absence. Roland Barthes talked about this in terms of the photograph and said that the photograph has a voice which mm -hmm. says this thing has yes. been, is no more, and furthermore is not here. And the word medium, you know, I, I'd, I'd always thought of medium as, as having, I suppose, two meanings. One being in, in the terms of like the leader of the seance, you know, the medium that channels the ghost. And the other being in the terms of fine art, the material carrier of the image. Um, well, the material carrier of the image is actually the material carrier of the imago, <laughs> you know, image coming from the Latin imago meaning ghost. Um, so they're both actually the same thing. Um, I'd like to introduce um, one of your, a piece of yours, a video of yours, if um, if you'd like to do that. Um, so we can see that in action. How about we look at, which what should we look at? The Olden Lobes to begin with. Sure. So the, the audio for this um, came from a talk that Peter Sellers, the opera director, gave at... Um, a symposium called the School of Sound uh, one year in which I was also a speaker. I was talking about lip syncing, the sort of stuff that I was just saying to you yeah. about um, lip syncing being a way of of making absence present. Um, and um, so he, in a, in a sort of peculiar way, sort of almost picked up from where I left off just by coincidence. Um, and so, um, and I was really taken with the content of his um, talk. So I contacted him and asked him if I could use it in performance. I wasn't sure exactly how at that point, but I just knew that my lip, by virtue of my lip syncing to what he was saying, something, th there was a crackle to that. I started working in the puppet theater when I was 10 years old. And at that time in the history of puppetry, uh, what was very exciting was the uh, advent of sound, because what you could do is pre-record the entire uh, puppet show, and because you were behind a, a, a little curtain or a castle, the audience doesn't know the show is pre-recorded, <laughs> um, <laughs> and then you can work the puppets to the tape and you can concentrate on really refined manipulation of the puppet when you don't have to at the same time create the, the, the dialogue. And, and the dislocation of the sound to the image meant that then the image was put in question. And we suddenly begin to realize that what you look at is the world of appearances. And there's something behind, beneath, deeper than a world of appearances. Now, we know this from, you know, a beautiful tradition of the Greek theater. Uh, as you know, the Greek theater was um, primarily a sound instrument, right? The, the amphitheaters remain these astounding acoustical marvels in which uh, it's a carving a giant ear into the side of a mountain and putting 5,000 people, situating them in this ear that you've made out of stone and flesh. And those 5,000 people are, through acoustical engineering, able to hear with perfect clarity the sound of one person. We live in a period where architecture is totally focused on visuals. And of course, so many of the great sacred structures are sound devices. And the Greek amphitheater was about deep listening. It was about democracy, is about your ability to listen, to hear, to hear a voice you wouldn't otherwise hear.
And democracy becomes about how do you listen, not just how do you speak. Greek democracy was, let's face it, a little bit challenged, but was a beautiful moment before it was totally unraveled by money. I know that doesn't sound familiar. What is that? Okay, never mind. Let's go back. Greek democracy also had one other slight limit, which was it was really perfect for men. But of course, if you were a woman, a child, a foreigner, or a slave, you had no voice. You could not speak in the Senate. You could not vote. Now, what's interesting about the Greek theater is the city council would pay for your ticket if you couldn't afford it. Pericles, at that height of Athenian democracy, actually would pay audience members a full day's agricultural wages so that they would not lose anything economically by spending the day at the theater. It was that important to be a citizen. You had to go to the theater. You had to be inside this deep listening device and you had to listen to whose voice. What's pretty interesting is the, the name of every surviving Greek play is the name of a woman, a child, a slave, or a foreigner. I've got a sneeze coming up for you. Have you? Okay. <laughs> we can do that because we're in different spaces. Uh, we're going to finish up with um, a video called Minette. Would you tell us a little bit about Minette? Um, how you made it? Where the sound's from? Yes, please? I can. So min that material comes from an interview that Minette gave to a chap called Stephen Watson. And a guy called Joe E. Jeffries, who is an intrepid uh, doc uh, uh, drag uh, documenter, he recorded this performance at the Bethlehem Green Working Men's Club, and he showed it to Stephen Watson, who then emailed me to encourage me, um, uh, and was really delighted that I'd used his audio, which was an unexpected um, uh, piece of, you know, correspondence. So then, um, I can't remember exactly how it happened, but perhaps he sent me a link to some other stuff, or I may have already discovered Minette, but I then asked him if I could use other audio. And um, so um, Minette was a, was a female impersonator. This video is part of a longer form show called Lost in Trans, um, which was loosely speaking, I called it a poem in motion. And it was uh, like a revisioning of metamorphosis, of its metamorphosis. Well, Dickie Bo, what a pleasure it has been for me to have you on here. Oh, my well, first it's lovely interview. talking to you as always. We have to say goodbye and we're going to head to Vienna where we're going to watch Minette with Cosi. She's going to give us a reaction video. Thank you, Dickie. Cheerio, Josh. Hey, we need to watch this. Where is it? Come on. Well, here it is. She calls herself a female impersonator, but we don't know who she's doing an impression of. I did an act. I did impressions of the stars. Okay. They're Ruth Edding. And Marie Chevalier and Eddie Canada. Ah, I know them. And oh. I would have done the Boswell sisters only only have one head. <laughs> Ethel Waters introduced that in twenty eight. Ethel Waters, hey, wow, it's a long time ago. And oh. she made a record of it. Mm -hmm. And I learned it off the record. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yes. And solid. then I got the music. Solid, yes. And it was what they call an under-the-counter piece. <laughs> okay. They didn't have it on the rack. You had to ask for it. Oh, different <laughs> times. <laughs> ah. So I did this. I suppose you want to hear part of that. I'd love to. Oh, Lord. <laughs> uh. <laughs> he shakes my ashes. 
greases my griddle, churns my butter, strokes my fiddle. My man is such a handy man. Aww. Oh. <laughs> but when I was 14, I was sent to a psychiatrist by okay. the school. Well, okay, I was and, there too, but not and I went maybe mm -hmm. eight or ten times every week to the psychiatrist. Okay, that's much. <laughs> and the last session, she told me I should become a female impersonator. Yes, but why not? So, at the time, I thought, that, I thought it was sort of funny, you know? Mm -hmm. and later on, I did, that is a good idea. Yes. Yes. You should be you. <laughs> I could be myself. Yeah. I was young and I looked adorable. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragdoll man. <coughs> Send me a kiss by wire. <laughs> Dearie, my heart's on fire. <laughs> if you refuse me, honey, you lose me. Then you'll be left alone. So, baby, telephone <laughs> and tell me all as you roam. Aww. Uh, I'm glad I was young when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, shit. You who don't know your victims There's that great big train in your shipping yard. They didn't hear it out. They didn't hear it out. Patient marks the hours flow that can defend. You can always. Strange song, right? <laughs> By the way, I think it's pretty though. It reminds me of Henry Purcell, like going around with his lute, you know, but like on acid or on Mars. Or <laughs> like when it goes, like. Just world. Just world. Mm -hmm. 
more anything you do. You do. You do. That part gets cool. Like, that part gets cool. Like. John, are you busy? Am I busy? You, other than dying in the middle of a show? No. Can you meet me at Constanza's? But, to Constanza's? Yes. What is it? She has to show you something. What is it? Come on, just well, come. Ah, we're going to Constanza's. Here comes the zona. Here comes the zona. This the house does turn for allen. John! What? Finally! Wait till you see it! The big, yeah, yeah. Hey, Stan. Hi! How are you? I want to show you something. What is it? It's my new series about heroes. Yes! Okay, I gotta see this. She's Come in so here. excited. Who's Constanza's hero? What do you think? Uh. Ah, uh, me? Yep. You you made a big portrait of me. Yes. I'm your hero. It's you and Kurt Cobain. And Kurt Cobain? Yes. What do you think? Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, and you even got my my little guardian angel, Constanza. Mm. Ah. Oh. Oh! Well, I gotta tell Josh. I. John, don't. Oh my God! John. John, wait. I'm Constanza's hero. I'm a hero. John, are Josh, okay? are you okay? This is. Is that, is that a painting of you? Yes! <laughs> yes! Well, that's a great end to a great episode. Yes! Josh! What? Do you know what this means? What? I'm up! Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Please hit subscribe. Same time next month. <laughs> <laughs>